Well, welcome back to my kitchen. Um, I wanted to, what I wanted to do today was to show you how to make scones. It's um, October at this particular point, almost October, and so there are a lot of pumpkins, and so we start thinking about spices and pumpkin and things like that. And I have a good recipe for a spicy pumpkin scone, and I'm going to cook it in the microwave convection oven today, but you can also bake it in your regular oven. So what I'm gonna do is I have the oven preheating and we'll just let that continue to preheat. I have it set for 400 degrees and I'm gonna start with putting the flour into the uh, mixing bowl. So I'm going to put a cup and I ha also have the, the baking powder on top. So it's one and a half cups of flour and one and one half teaspoons of baking powder. And then with this other half cup, the salt is on top. So it's a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. And then I add a little a third of a cup of brown sugar and I have a half a teaspoon of cinnamon and a half a teaspoon of nutmeg on top of that. So um, that mixes in. And then I'm going to just mix this together with a fork. And I'll kind of tip it here so you can see. I'm just mixing the brown sugar in a little bit. And uh, <clears throat> usually you make, uh, scones are very similar to a biscuit. They just have sugar little tiny bit of sugar in them and then they have a little bit of um, so they have some egg in it too which just gives it a little bit more they're a little bit more like a shortcake dough so here I have a fourth of a cup of butter four tablespoons of butter and I had this softened a little bit when the butter softened then you can just use a fork and kind of uh, press through it and make it crumbly I could also use a pastry blender that's one of the 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 U-shaped things that you can go down through when the butter's hard that works but uh, a lot of times if I don't want to bother with that or when you're out on the road you may not have that with you then you can just use a fork and the, have the butter softened. If the butter isn't already softened you could put the butter on top of it and then just put it into the microwave for about 15 seconds and that would soften the butter. So I want to get this so that there are little crumbles in it and so if you look oops, in here, you can kind of see the crumbliness of the uh, flour mixture. And then this, this particular recipe uses some crystallized candy ginger. And so I chopped some of it already. And uh, so I have a little bit of it chopped. I wanted to just show you how, an easy way to chop it. So I'll just set it in here. And I'm going to just take a piece of the, it comes, this is like sliced ginger and then it's been candied and then it's coated with sugar so it doesn't stick together. And so I just take the kitchen shears and just cut it into little strips. And then I just take those little strips. And then hold them together and then just cut them into the measuring cup or the spoon that I'm using. It adds a nice spicy flavor. You can use ground ginger too. You'd use about a fourth of a teaspoon for this. Uh, but this just adds a nice flavor to cookies and uh, <coughs> scones and desserts when you want gin a ginger flavor. So I'm adding this after I've cut the butter in because this is kind of little chunky pieces. I could put it in before, but it kind of gets in the way of the butter. So then I'll just mix that in. And then to this, I'm going to add three tablespoons of milk and um, a third of a cup of um, cooked pumpkin. And one egg. So I'm going to take, just take the fork that I was using here and I'll just mix that up a little bit and then it'll just mix into the dough a little more evenly. So I just stir it with the fork till the egg is blended and then I'm going to make, usually just make a little indentation in the center of it and then just pour that in the center and then it's easy to mix it in.
So I just stir this together until it forms a dough. I first was introduced to scones, um, I think back when I was a child and I was in 4-H. I would go to the, I would lived in Oregon and I went to the, I had dairy animals and I went to the Oregon State Fair and Fisher Scones out of Seattle uh, always had a, a big booth at the State Fair and they baked scones right there and served them with butter, served them hot out of the oven with butter and raspberry jam. And that was like an everyday trip. We went, we always went to the scone place at least sometime during the day to get our daily scones. We stayed at the fair for four or five days. Um, they had a dormitory there that we could stay in, so it was kind of fun. But anyway, so I mixed this together and it's just about together. So I'm gonna turn it out onto a floured surface. So I'm gonna use just a, this is just a dish towel that has a little flour on it. I put this on earlier. And uh, <clears throat> I like a towel because it, it's, it has a grain to it so that the, um, the flour goes down into the grain and it's, the dough doesn't stick to it. So I want to just mix this together. And uh, when you make scones, if you want to add just a tiny bit more milk, then you can make a drop scone and you can just put it into a little individual baking cup and then you don't have to you don't have to do this shaping but this is the way the scones are traditionally made so I'll just go ahead and do it this way um, try to get it all in here oh. <laughs> I thought I had the oven preheated I said I had it turned off so let's go back to preheat get it started all over again so I'm preheating it to 400 degrees and get it on start so that'll sound, that sounds better. Okay. So what I want to do is just shape these into a, uh, about a six inch round and have it a little bit higher in the center than on the edge. So I'll do this and let me just clean my hands off here. I'll just clean them off into the bowl. And then we want to cut it into six wedges. So I just take um, a, a knife with a straight edge and I'll just go down and cut it in half. I get it just a little bit floured. It won't stick quite as much. And then just cut it into thirds here. So one third there and one third here. And then they're all ready to bake. And you can make these ahead if you want. Uh, you could even shape them the night before and have them in the refrigerator. So um, I'm going to put them on a Teflon um, coated baking sheet here that's on top of the rack. You can put them just onto a cookie sheet, just grease it lightly, unless you have uh, the Teflon baking um, sheet on there. So I'll just put them on like this. And then you can all you can make smaller ones too. So sometimes I make this recipe makes six regular size, or it'll make twelve smaller size. So if I'm making the smaller size, I just divide the dough in half, and then I take each half and then make it into a about a five inch round, and then again cut it in six six pieces the same way. So they'll just be about half that size. So these are ready to go into the oven and. Um, so as soon as the oven is preheated, we'll put them into the oven and be ready to bake them. Okay, so our oven just dinged that it's preheated to 400 degrees. So I'm gonna just put these into the oven for 11 to 13 minutes. So I set them in there and on this particular oven, I push convection and then the temperature and then I'm gonna set it, I'm gonna go ahead and set it for 13 minutes because this oven takes just a tiny bit longer. So, um, then we'll let that bake and as soon as it's baked we'll come back and um, I'll show you taking them out and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, there's a spice glaze that goes over it so I'm going to mix that up while this is baking and then I'll just show you how to finish them off and then they're all ready to uh, enjoy. Okay, well the scones are just about cooked, they have just a few seconds left and so I'm going to just mix up the glaze so it's a half a cup of powdered sugar and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon and then just mix those together 
And I'm just going to use the measuring cup for that because it makes a nice small container. But I could also use one of these measuring cups that are like the one cup one would work okay. So I'm going to pour the milk in. And when you pour out of these, even the measuring cups, you can kind of push them together a little bit. And <clears throat> then it makes it easier to, to uh, get a pour spout. So I didn't quite add quite all the milk because it's easier to add a little bit later than it is to come back and put a, few, a little bit more on. So this is what the glaze looks like and it wants to be a little bit runny so that it'll kind of run onto the um, <coughs> stones. So I just take these out and this is what they look like. Um, like I said, they're kind of like a biscuit, the brown on the bottom and on the top. And so I'm going to just, <clears throat> they're still hot, so when I put the glaze on, it'll kind of just run over them. So I'm going to just kind of make a little pour spot out of the fr frosting here and kind of push it out. Um, and then just kind of put a little glaze over the top of them. You could also just use a brush, <clears throat> a brush and brush that on if you wanted to. And it'll just kind of, since they're still very hot, they'll just um, glaze them. If you make these up to freeze, what you might want to do is just keep the glaze in the refrigerator and then um, heat them after you take them out of the freezer and then uh, put the glaze on just before you serve them. So this way you can also just kind of brush this on with either a spatula or a um, brush. So that works too. So we'll just kind of get a little bit, of, just add a little bit of sweetness to each one. And then once it's, the glaze is kind of set so it's not running too much, <clears throat> then you can put them onto a serving plate. And so I have one here, I just put a, kind of a fallish like napkin on and then you can just set them on onto this. So I'll just hold one up here so you can see it really well and, uh, and then you're all ready to have nice warm scones. They're great with a cup of coffee, with a um, <clears throat> apple cider, anything like that. Yeah, they're great with soups and salads. They're also great for midday snacks and for breakfast as well. So. Uh, if you haven't tried scones, I'd give them a try, and especially now when pumpkin is popular, and I enjoy the nice spicy flavor. So, um, you can most of the things I'm using I have on my website, and um, so hope to see you again soon. Mm -hmm.